Hello YouTube, I'm Histocraft, and welcome to episode 10 of my Roman City Let's Build series. I apologize for my long absence, but I'm back now and with improved hardware. Everything I've done so far, up to this video, has been on a crappy little laptop, but I've been saving up and finally I've purchased a decent PC. So look forward to more frequent and higher quality uploads. Also, as we take a little sneak peek at today's builds, you'll notice I can finally run decent shaders. I think they make the city look a lot better and I hope you do too. For today's video, I have finished the city forum and created a temple district beyond it. I am also starting to spruce up some of my older builds like the amphitheater and my aqueduct. All right, without further ado, let's get into our first build the Forum Square itself. What I'm building here is a triumphal column, also known as a victory column, which is a monument that commemorates a great military victory, specifically honoring the emperor or general responsible for said victory. Now I'm building a triumphal arch. This will be the second triumphal arch in my city. Similar to triumphal columns, triumphal arches were usually dedicated to a victorious general However, they were also sometimes dedicated to other important civic events and people, such as the ascension of a new emperor, the completion of a major construction project, the founding of a new colony, etc. This arch is based on the arch of Septimus Severus, which still stands in the Roman Forum to this day. Now I'm adding these victory columns all around the Forum Square. And honestly, I kind of get carried away. And I put down way more than would be historically accurate, but I think it looks good. Let me know what you guys think. Let's check out some cinematic shots of the Forum, then we can move on to the next build. In case it's not clear, there's supposed to be a bronze statue of a chariot on top of the arch. My statue making abilities definitely need some work. Like I said before, I went a little crazy with the victory columns, but it looked empty without this many. Alright, let's get on to our next build, which is going to be a Temple of Mars, the Roman God of War. This temple is built in a Greek style. Roman architecture, much like all aspects of Roman culture, was heavily influenced by the Greeks and the Etruscans. Initially, Roman temples derived mostly from the Etruscan model, However, subsequent Hellenistic influence occurred over time. A 
temple appearing this Greek would be quite rare on the western side of the Roman Empire, primarily existing in the Hellenistic East, but I chose to add it in this city for some variation and to showcase the Greek influence on Roman civilization. Okay, the Temple of Mars is done. Let's check it out. I love the way this temple interacts with the cliff behind it. I'm definitely going to try to build some more temples into these cliffs. Now let's head inside and check out the interior. Inside this main room of the temple, referred to in Latin as the Cella, C-E-L-L-A, is a statue of Mars, a sacrificial altar, and fires to burn the offering. Animal sacrifice and the burning of food offerings was integral to Roman deity worship. The sacrificial altar should be outside the temple, but I did not have room for it. Next, I'm filling this awkward space with a circular temple that is largely inspired by the Roman pantheon. This temple design is very unique, but has become a staple of classical architecture because of how well the Roman pantheon has been preserved over the ages, due to its conversion into a Catholic church, Santa Maria ad Martiris, in the 7th century. To better fit this awkward corner location, I'm adding a second entrance and portico. The portico is the covered porch with all the pillars and is the defining feature of a Roman temple. The interior of the temple is also heavily inspired by the Pantheon, consisting of one round cella with many shrines to different gods around it. Now for the last time lapse, I'm working on a small temple to fit in this space. This temple style is definitely the Roman standard. This Etruscan inspired design was by far the most widely used across the empire, epitomizing Roman architecture and being widely recognizable to even today's historically illiterate. The defining feature of this style, and what sets it apart from the Greek style I displayed earlier, is that the focus is all on the front facade. The portico and standalone columns only extend out from the front, and the sides of the building are largely ignored, hidden, or inaccessible.
Another key feature of Roman temples is their being raised on a podium. Because of space limitations, the podium heights and number of steps I've used is more typical of Greek temples. Roman temple podiums should really be twice the height, at least. Off camera, I've added a proper podium for my Pantheon-like temple and changed all the porticos to include extensions of the podium around the stairs. These stage-like extensions were used as altars for animal sacrifices and offering burning during large outdoor ceremonies. Most Roman citizens couldn't enter the elite holy temples and instead worshipped by gathering outside the temple and taking part in said ceremonies. Notice the inscriptions Magrippa CXXV. Magrippa represents Marcus Agrippa, the original builder of the Pantheon. And CXXV stands for 125 AD, the date that Hadrian rebuilt the Pantheon after it burned down in a fire. The actual date should be 126 AD, but I didn't notice until too late. Inside this temple is a table for small offerings and libations. A libation is defined as a drink poured out for a deity. In Roman practice, it was usually wine, milk, or honey. Beyond the table is a small shrine for burning incense, and beyond that is the statue of the unspecified god this temple is devoted to. Now, of course, I had to add the iconic hole in the roof on my Pantheon-inspired build. Some might find it foolish to include a hole purposefully in a roof. But this hole produced natural light, allowed ventilation, and reduced the structural strain of the dome on the building itself. The inscription on the actual Roman Pantheon begins with Magrippa and translates to Marcus Agrippa, the son of Lucius, three times consul, built this. Man, Romans really like to flex on each other. But shout out to Hadrian for keeping the same inscription after he rebuilt the temple. I've kept it purposely dark in here to highlight the beam of light shining through the hole in the dome. Another thing I've done is given the amphitheater a facelift, and I'll probably be giving some of my older builds facelifts in the videos to come as well. When I first built this amphitheater, and some of the other builds, I was using too much sandstone and not enough color and marble. I was being influenced by the modern day old ruined appearance of these landmarks. But I want to create a city that is alive and Honestly, even now, 
I can say I'm not using enough color, as paint was used by ancient civilizations much more than we think. Much of the ancient world that we see now, as sandstone, marble, and brick, used to be painted in vibrant colors, even the statues. I'm always trying to find the balance, whether it be the balance of color, or the balance between sandstone, brick, and marble, or the balance between realism and following an aesthetic. As we approach the end of the episode, I would like to show off some of the parks and plazas I've been adding around the area. Alright folks, that's all for this episode. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Next episode, I will probably be adding a theater or building a large temple on that large necropolis-like plateau. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more like it. I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Peace.